Hello folks, this is Lee Murphy, the artist who uh, created art by Lee Murphy and the creator of all the artworks you see here on this channel and on my website. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different because uh, this one's obviously not on the easel and possibly because, well, definitely because it's very, very heavy and I am too lazy to take it up there and move it and the frame is damaged. That's why I actually got the frame. Uh, it was given to me for the mere cost of going and getting it. Otherwise, this is something that would have been way out of my price range. And it's something that got me to thinking about a good topic here on the presentation of your work. Um, relating it back to the previous videos about getting your work into jury shows and museums, um, a lot of what determines your acceptance into jury shows is presentation. And as I said before, follow the directions. Um, this particular frame would actually eliminate me from most, if not all, exhibitions because, well, you know, it's pretty over the top there. Um, what people want to see in group shows or even in a showing of all of your work when it's curated for something like a museum is they want to see a certain degree of continuity. Uh, I was reminded of one of the biggest shows, jury shows, that I had been in, uh, in a western state. Um, for whatever reasons the uh, show committee had decided, there were not much uh, regulations on what they wanted the artists to present their work just to make sure that it was, you know, able to be hung in the show. So when I went to go see the show, I was really kind of disappointed because it made it very clear to me that while the work was, the, the artists from all over the world was first rate, I mean, it was, it was an honor to be in that show, but the fact that there were shows, I mean, you would see frames like this one and then you would see simple gallery wraps and everything in between, it kind of gave it the, you know, a ragtag rummage sale look to me. And I was really surprised, but it was a very good example of why this um, rule is fairly common when it comes to exhibitions. Um, I've seen a lot of artists really just fight it tooth and nail and I can understand where they're coming from because I was in that mindset when I was first starting out as well. I wanted my work to look the absolute best possible and a standard gallery type frame or exhibition type frame, uh, for example in watercolors it usually is a, a white or light neutral mat and a plain metallic or wooden frame and plexiglass. I mean, if you're going to be entering watercolors and water media, anything has to be glazed in a juried competition, be prepared for paying the extra amount for plexiglass because if you use glass in your framing, it will be immediately rejected from the show on, sta on safety standards. Uh, I have all kinds of horror stories about people who ignored that rule and with the obvious conclusion can be very expensive on the artist's uh, standpoint. Anyhow, there's a reason why everything needs to hang well and look con you know, uh, congruent as a show, not just with your own work, but with the work of other artists where you really can't tell what's going to be entered. It just really helps the overall look. And from a practical standpoint, even though I finally got over the fact that um, choosing just the right mat and just the right frame, no matter what, um, in my mind made the artwork look its best. Uh, it was kind of a, uh, a handicap because not everybody thinks the way the artist does when they, you know, if I want to buy a particular painting, I want it to be in this particular place that only I know about. The artists can't possibly know where their art's going to end up and how well it's going to look in this eventual setting of whoever buys it. So it's kind of like having the most beautiful sofa in the world, but if it's the wrong color, it's the wrong color and, and, it's, and it won't sell. So I learned how to get beyond that and basically come to terms with a good standard presentation of my work. That will keep it as neutral as possible because most people will reframe it. And <laughs> this leads into another thing too, where I've actually had people complain to me that when they had my work reframed, that the, art, that the framing uh, treatment that they selected actually cost more than the artwork itself and I was just flabbergasted like and how is that my problem? Um, and if anything else it means I didn't pay enough for the artwork. 
But it's something to be aware of too that we as artists get manipulated at uh, with because the art and framing industry is a huge one. I mean, there's an awful lot that depends on us as artists to survive. And I mean, you can go to any of the big box stores like Michael's or Joann's or any of the other places. And I've had it on firsthand um, evidence from people who work there that they're trained to upsell you on the most expensive options for everything. Obviously that's, you know, that's just good, not good business practices, but from a practical standpoint on the benefit of the seller, I, you know, I can understand that. Uh, so it pays to be a little um, skeptical about when somebody's saying your work has just looked fabulous in this three, four, five hundred dollar framing situation, and it very well might. But if you're in the business of selling your own art, it might behoove you to learn how to uh, cut your own frames, do your own mats, uh, glazing and all. Um, or at least if you don't do it for all of your work, understand what goes into it and the aesthetics behind it and what eventually will benefit you better uh, as an artist trying to sell your own work. So back to this particular frame, once again, it was good four figures, so the person who gave it to me, and I was to use my artist ingenuity to fix it up a bit because these fancy frames frequently do get um, badly damaged because they are fragile in their own way. And yes, it looks fabulous, but here's something to think as well. When you see somebody looking at your work, do you really want to say, wow, what a frame or wow, what a piece of artwork? Um, the best framing is to protect and preserve the work and make it shine out without obscuring it or outshouting the work itself. This one, because it's an Art Deco classical subject, I figure it actually fit pretty well with the frame and I have it sitting here on my wall, but it's not really something that I want to go ahead and promote. Um, in the event, well, eventually when this painting goes out to a show somewhere, it will be taken out of this frame and put in a simple floater or even just let it sit on the wall as a gallery wrap so people can read their own style into it if they want to. Um, as I made earlier the comparison with a fancy sofa that's the wrong color, somebody might, wow, I really like that painting, but dear God, that frame looks horrible. Uh, so I cannot dictate the taste for anybody. Um, even if they do groove on the artwork, I, there's still a lot that they might groove on that I won't. And it's something to keep in consideration too because it is really expensive to uh, preserve and mount your work in a professional manner. So I hope this helps and gives people information and insights on things for their own artwork. And thank you.